All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. And here we go, and welcome back to another episode of Toxic Masculinity. We are here to offer up our political satire approach to views on both domestic and foreign affairs. We are here to entertain, offend, and defend anybody and everybody. We are just a couple of crotchety old farts. They have a bad habit of speaking the truth, but won't let a few facts get in the way of a good story. We believe in America and Americans. If this is not for you, well, then I suggest you change the channel because we still believe in freedom of speech and we will rub your face into the cow pie of reality. You hear me without, you know, it will make you scratch your head or, or scratch your ass. Hopefully not at the same time. But now, without further ado, my cohort and crime, Mr. Don, the Predator Fry, and of course, his ever faithful sidekick, Quinn, is making another one of our cameos here today. And our special guest today is known as the Hammer, oh, Mark the Hammer Coleman, MMA legend, superstar, and uh, amateur wrestler, Columbus, Ohio, Ohio State re amateur wrestler standout. We'll get a chance. We'll, we'll just jump into all kinds of things to let people know all about when Mark Coleman got the name of the Hammer in the first place. Mark, how are we doing there today? The original godfather of ground and pound here, Dan Severn. You got there first, but I coined the phrase. Because I said, I told him, I would say, Maurice Smith, I'm I'm gonna take your I'm gonna take his fucking ass to the ground and pound the goddamn shit out of him. My mom was so pissed at me for saying that. And this was live TV. They they don't show it. They lost the footage somehow, but oh that's my goddamn game plan. That's what I'm going to fucking do. And they cut me right off. Joe Rogan's first interview ever. And they they cut it off right there and, and God, they put me in the, the tank. Because, are, you, are you saying because just because you, you use some some multi-syllable words that the, most people are, aren't familiar with? <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, you know, it, it was brilliant, but they don't use it. Why don't they use that footage? Talk maybe me millions. Maybe that maybe that they'll bring it out of the archives now because because we're airing it here. Oh, it made, made like, your ex-wife millions. You didn't get a fucking penny of it. I'm sure. <laughs> Well, no, 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 Hey, listen, I'm not like all these every other men. My ex was just glad to get the fuck away, man. It was beautiful. Oh, mine was I too, but she decided to take all my money with her. She got a little <laughs> bit. She got a little bit, but you know what I mean? I'm, I'm pretty sneaky. Good. I'm glad. Yeah, I hear you. See, and see, Don, and, and Mark doesn't even wear a fanny pack, but he's still pretty <laughs> sneaky. As long as he's got, he's got the financial wisdom. Yeah, you know, Mark. Maybe one day you too shall get a Dan Severn Beastie fanny pack. Dan, have, you know I have. I'm not that much younger than you. You know I I rocked that son of a bitch for a <laughs> long time. I rocked it. I rocked it way past its due. But I and you, me and you, are about the only two that can get away with it because it's as cool <laughs> as being sober, brother. Oh, so we're cool, and a fanny pack is cooler. Yeah, well, I don't know. Mr. Fry likes to keep pointing that fanny pack out to me all the time, but that's okay. It's okay. Someone's got to take the heat. I don't mind taking the heat at times. All you got is money and snacks in that thing, Severin. Well. <laughs> what else is there? That's all he what needs, else? What? Yeah, what that's else is That's all money? he needs. I would have, <laughs> back in my prime, I would have a little bit more than that in that son of a bitch, John. I would have that thicker stuff full. <laughs> of uh of uh hunger hunger inducing uh medication yeah exactly that 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 would be one thing in there and then stuff that made you not so hungry so i mixed it all up you know a little bit of this a little bit of that all right let's well i'm gonna try to get us back on and corral there all right let's let's go back <laughs> to the era of the the, the young hammer when uh, corral, you, what's corralled mean well just we're, we're circling we're circling we're gonna circle on back we're going to go back to the uh, beginning lost, here. Of Mr. Severn lost control, you, and he's not happy about it. Because <laughs> we're, look, we're, look, we're, <laughs> we're looking at your amateur wrestling, because the reality is 
when you see the stats that have come out more recently, because uh, um, some different experts are trying to say which discipline are there more champions when it comes to mixed martial arts. And one of the most recent polls simply just list all the various champions uh, by discipline. And it seems like amateur wrestling right now is on top. It has produced well, more champions than any other discipline. And I just kind of wonder, what's your thoughts on that? Well, it's always been that way, hasn't it? I didn't know there was any other way. I Everything I watched, just the rest was always one. What other what other martial arts is there? Right. Okay. But that, well, okay. jiu-jitsu, like, you know, that ain't, eh. No, I got respect to all of them. But I, like you, Dan, when I seen you in there a couple fights before me, I knew it was over. Game over. Jiu-Jitsu, it rocks, but they ain't got the sperm that the wrestlers got. You know, I'm bringing some sperm, buddy. You brought some sperm. Mine was a little fresher. And then, <laughs> and then I had the meanness, the manginess. I've been, I've been beat up. I've been beat down for 28 years in wrestling. This shit's going to be easy, is what I thought. I relatively thought it was going to be easy. And but it was for a while. Unfortunately, I didn't have the courage to say that when they put the microphone in front of my fucking face. When I'm sitting with my buddies watching this shit, I talk like this. I'm gonna Don, sorry, but I said I'm gonna smash you. I'm gonna <laughs> smash that very much. I look at my friends, and if anybody one dude had the courage to say, one dude was your big fan, he said. He said, oh, I don't know about that fry guy. I said, I'll kill him. What the, who is this guy? I didn't even know who he was. He wasn't a wrestler, obviously. He's a friend that got to the party and he wasn't even a wrestler. I don't know how he made it, especially making a comment like that. But, you know, eventually I told everybody, listen, wrestlers were going to dominate for a long time, but eventually the other martial arts are going to take over because it's going to be wrestlers athleticism and and mental toughness learning how to kick your fucking head off and 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 smash you in the face without any fear i had that fear don uh the greatest fight ever you and takayama i would have loved to bend that person but there was only like a 51 percent chance that i was going to win it you know you had about a 49 percent chance you know so <laughs> i'd rather just take you down brother so, you know, it, 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 I didn't do that, but wrestling, it, I love all the martial arts. A wrestler who learns jujitsu is super dangerous. Hey, I just respect my sport of wrestling. Really, it's all athletes now. They're, they're not wrestlers anymore. They're martial artists because this sport's been around for 30 fucking years. Now they're martial artists who happened to realize how important wrestling was it was a dying sport dan severn when when you came around and i came around wrestling was about to get kicked out of the united states the colleges yeah. were shutting down it was a worthless wasted sport doing nothing for anybody and bam now it's the most important greatest sport in the fucking world buddy and okay. you you dominated it dan you were the pinning machine well, let, let 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 me be a little bit of of uh, uh, I guess a reality check there for you. The hard part is on a collegiate basis, you see a lot of a lot of colleges have dropped the sport of wrestling. When you look at yeah. the Big Ten, you look at uh, any of these conferences. I mean, like for example, Arizona State, you know, was was in the uh, was was in the, uh, the the Big Ten conference right there, and and there's. There's only about seven schools left anymore. There's on the West we're Coast anymore. Right there's so many Pac-10, Pac-10. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Dan, 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 Dan. I understand that, but I'm saying I do understand it's dying because money-wise still, but it was dead when we was coming up. It it was gone. It would have been dead by now hadn't it been for the UFC to save it and show its value to the world. But you're right. We're low on the totem pole. We always have been disrespected. Uh, 
That's why we're so fucking tough. And the reason them Russians are so tough is because I went there when you're out of college. I went there for three weeks to Siberia in the middle of January. And you got to wrestle outside in the cold. Them son of a bitches are tough, but when it comes down to it, we're tougher, all right, Fry? America? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Always, always. But I, I put them number two. No? Oh, okay. Let, let's go. Okay. When did, when did Mark Did we get off subject again, Dan? You told me to no, stay no, off no, subject. No, 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 that's okay. You but told that's me to okay. stay that's subject. Right. I apologize. I, I, I'm, I'm going to get out like like you see the, the runway agents right there. They usually have those colored... Uh, Colored uh, flashlights, and they got to start to go this way and and, and bring them back. I, I'm that's why that's why that's why they pay me the big bucks. Oh, I, I try know. to reel things back in. Oh, I know you fucking kept me and Don reeled in for like ever. That's why was <laughs> the only reason me and Don are still here is because of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you ain't so is, it, is that why you go ahead and to the house, head to the crapper now? <laughs> no, I just. And I took a long enough break, Dan. I've, I've been so on it. I told you, I rarely sit down. I promised you I'd give you guys an hour on my ass, but I had to get up. I'm too excited. I got to I gotta do the rest of this uh, interview moving, if that's okay. Uh, I think we're well, right here. I'm going to do it right here in the hallway. You'll give us a scenic tour. Huh? Will you give us a scenic tour all at the same time? Yeah, this is, yeah. Well, They're okay. Well, well, I can't, I when, can't show you much more. When, when did when okay when when did Mark when did you start your amateur wrestling career? I mean, how old were you when you started amateur wrestling? Mm, probably about six, five, six, seven years old. But I was doing it. I was doing it fresh out of the mom's cooch. I was wrestling right when I came out. That fucking doctor, he held me up and he spanked me in the ass right when I came out, and and I fucking started screaming at him. I was going to kill him. So I had to get prepared for the doc, man. When I got big enough, I'm going to kill that son of a bitch. But, you know, <laughs> my my first training partner would have been my oldest sister. She had three years on me, Dan. And she fucking whooped me until about, I don't know, sixth, fifth, sixth grade. I don't know what the hell it was. But I finally got a hold of her. I got her down. I'm on top of her. And she's a monster, but... My fucking dad stepped in and yanked me off her and shoved me up against the window. He started showing me his hands. This, 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 this. He said, don't you ever, ever touch her. I said, what the fuck? You know, life, she, she was, life, was, life really just, life was just didn't seem fair at all. I thought yeah. all I had to do, I thought all I had to do since I was a little baby is just get big enough, strong enough, and tough enough. And everything comes my way. Well, no, I mean, well, again, you know, again growing up in a family, yeah, you know, especially if, if you have older brothers, stuff like that. I, I had an older brother, so again, I, th there's a pecking order. So you, you have older sister, there's a pecking order, and on that. So yeah, no, I, I get it all together. I, you know, I, I, lost seven, you. I lost you for a second, Dan. What'd you say there to re respond to my craziness? No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that. Uh, there's a there's a there's a pecking order in a family. So when you're the oldest, you 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 you're the dominant, whether it be male or female, because women mature earlier than what what the guys do. So again, you know, she had the upper hand on you. She was born. You said three years older than than what you were. I didn't have a problem with it, but when it came time for the upper hand to fucking change, yeah. Well, my daddy he said, "Daddy, how it works." And uh, it was a rude awakening to me. But, yeah, she was uh, then about, you know, probably you know, once a year, like from the seven, eight, nine, ten, to like eight, nine, one, eight, once a year, I would wrestle in a tournament in, in my hometown. And uh, I was a I was a skinny little kid, but I was I was feisty as they get. And I was strong and I was way hungrier than anybody, even at, even at a young age, even at this age. And uh uh, but they didn't have much wrestling. But then in the seventh grade, that's when I, I got on a, well, my team. My first year on the team, I was 100 and, uh, 110 pounds my my seventh grade year, 115 pounds my eighth grade year, 138 pounds my freshman year in high school. Then I went, I gained, I was in the weight room since yeah, I, I could do 100 push-ups in a row when I was five years old because I remember my daddy – my my uncle coming over and giving me a dollar for every one I could do in a row. So I got to a hundred 
got the dollar bill. So I was pretty smart back then, Dan. I knew what it was about that dollar. And then, but, but, yeah. But, but see, then, see, the thing is, Mr. Fry would say, but Dan said we could open up this fanny pack and still have that same hundred dollar bill. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I fucking, I lost that bitch before I woke up the next morning. <laughs> well, what you, okay, so you, you okay from, from folk style, but when was your first experience, say, with like freestyle or Greco? Oh yeah, and I feel well. I did a I did a little freestyle thing, um, like in the in the freaking eighth grade, man. So I was seventh eighth grade. I was just learning the sport, yeah, you know. And but, but uh, I had to wrestle a kid like fucking was older than me. He freestyled the shit out of me. He he freaked out me up so fucking bad that I said, "What the hell is that shit?" But uh. You know, I didn't find out about that until I knew about it all the way through high school and all through college, but I just didn't. When the season ended in college, I went right to the weight room, Dan. I, I Every year since I was a little kid, I made sure. Cause I played three sports in high school. I was all state in football, uh, all state in baseball, all state in wrestling. So, so I, But I always was in my basement getting stronger and bigger because the bigger, stronger, faster was my – answer to everything every every ass whoop when i got i just i had to get bigger stronger faster and everything will be fine you yeah, know that, so, that, i mean but that was actually well, the, the actual name of the weightlifting program all through uh i, I mean through that to whole time era it was bigger stronger faster how to get people in, in all sports uh bigger stronger faster so you you definitely were into that time period Yep, but I, I, so, I guess I, I never knew about your baseball. What 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 position did you play in baseball? Oh, I played a lot of them. I was a pitcher. I was a pitcher. That was the most important. I had to have that ball in my hands all the time. But then I played third base when I didn't pitch. Uh, the hot box that was uh, that was fucking crazy. But um, uh, then one time I, I pitched the first game of a double header, and uh, the, the catcher didn't want to catch the second game. I pitched the first game. He didn't want to catch the second game. I said, I'll fucking catch. So I caught the second game, man. And I love that shit. But uh, and then towards the end of my career, when I knew I wasn't going to play it in, uh, you know, I wasn't going to play it in, in college or in, in the majors. Uh, I said, I, I'm, I'm tired of third base because fuck these BBs coming at your face. You know what I mean? Uh, so they put me out in right field and I fell in love with right field, Dan, because you could just chill out there. You got two plays, you know, tag up at second, tag up at third. You know what I mean? And, and and that was it. You know, I wasn't a home run hitter for some reason because I, I, I just smashed line drives and I pulled, I hit a lot of doubles and shit. But uh, I got a few home runs, but I didn't have that. Nat I mean, I didn't have that natural uppercut because which is probably a good thing, right? No, well, again, I was a, I wasn't really a baseball player myself, so I mean, yeah, I, good, I, I, good thing I for me, it. man. I wish I wish you'd have, you know, if you'd have you'd have played baseball, you had a hit, and you played baseball, then fuck, I'd have won UFC ten. Yeah, that's a great thing for me. Yeah. Well, I lost you guys for a second again. What <laughs> happened? I said, it was a great thing for me that you didn't. You couldn't hit a fucking ball because then you, know, you stayed in wrestling, you know. Otherwise, you'd have went to baseball and I'd you won UFC ten. So, <laughs> <laughs> just wonderful, just wonderful, Mark, wonderful. <laughs> ah, shit, no. That that this uh, okay. man, damn, yeah. I watched you, Don. I watched you. I watched you UFC nine and uh, UFC eight, whatever. I watched you your last two fights and uh, I knew. That's who I was coming after. And Dan, of course, but he, for some reason, I, I didn't know how they played it, but he was the hot man. And that's who I was coming for. And then uh, then me and Dan hooked up, man. It was pretty, I mean, for the wrestling world, Dan Severn, Don Fry, Mark Coleman, we all three should be in the Hall of Fame. They don't even, they don't even, they don't even honor me as as a I was the black sheep, Dan. USA Wrestling. They never did like me. They didn't want me making the. They they did not want me making the Olympic team. They wanted Bill Shear to win that shit, and they tried to fuck me bad. I know you know all about that, but 
it, it went to the third match, best two out of three. It went to the third match. I beat him six five in overtime. And uh shit, they tried to screw me. Tied it up five five in regulation. And really, I this is probably my this is probably my proudest moment, whatever, you know, making the Olympic team. At the time for sure it was, but uh uh Five five. I mean, yeah, I, I would say definitely. It, 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 it's every it's every person's goal to try to be the best. And uh, the I mean, like the Olympic teams, you know, Olympic games only come around every four years. That's it. That makes it even that much harder for to make something like that because it only comes around every four years. So to to know that you're going to mature and evolve at that right time period, that's that, that's a big gamble. Well. And then Bill Shear, I you know you know him, right? You probably wrestled yeah, him, right? Yeah, I know I know the Shear brothers very well. I thought you wrestled him. He's a little bit older, young, a little bit right at your age, ain't he? Almost. No, I've I've, I've wrestled them both at different times. Yeah, yeah, but anyways, he came out of retirement specifically because he knew I was the number one ranked guy, and he knew what he had done to me. I was his training partner in '88. And he, he was one guy that he his size and his skill and his technique, he got me every time. You know what I mean? He, he would beat me every time. And, I, no, I never took him down. So uh, he retired, thank God, because he retired because there was no money in the sport. He retired in his prime. Uh, and, and, and I took over the weight class eventually. So he came out of retirement, 30 days training, and, he, and I'm sitting on top of the ladder, so I don't have, I wait for the winner. And Bill Shear comes out of retirement. He beat Kirk Trost for the, to take it. And I got to face Bill Shear in the finals. And he was the golden boy. They loved him to death. And, uh, man, we went to the third match, Dan. Shit. Now, I, I lost my mind there because I really didn't. That was one thing that you have to believe you can do it, but. I believed I could do it, but there was always the that was the terrible thoughts coming in. Possibly, what if it don't happen? You know what I mean? But I wasn't sure if I belonged. You know what I mean? I was trying to fit in and belong. And now I'm on the same team as John Smith, Kevin Jackson, Bruce Baumgartner, Kenny Monday, Kendall Cross, Townsend, Zeke Jones. Tim Vanny, Chris Campbell, my training partner. I got every one of them, man. I know that team. Okay, wow. now, Chris, okay. let me stop right there right now. Now, was was not Chris Campbell just a freak of nature? Well, yeah, he he's the reason I moved up to 220 because he came out of retirement. I was, I was about to take over 198. I had to beat Jim Shear, and I had figured I could beat Jim by the time the trials got there. And then, then Chris Campbell comes out of retirement in 1991, and I wrestled him in this freaking tournament. He only beat me two to nothing, but I knew there was something amazingly special about this man because uh, I never was able to touch his legs. Every time I shot in, he had to ba he. I didn't even know what he was doing, but my leg, my hands were coming right for the legs. And next thing you know, his legs were gone, you know, but he showed me what he did. And he's so, it's the first thing he blocks when. Yeah. See, a lot, a lot of people are, are not going to know who we're, 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 who we're even talking about right now, but he was just an incredible physical specimen uh, of a wrestler. I mean, just, yeah. Well, I, I tell you what, I got paybacks with this guy because I moved up to 220, Dan. And I no longer had to cut a pound. I had to eat all day to stay 220. And now he's my training partner at 198, and we became friends. But, oh, Dan, I'm just telling you, one day I sent him. He, he went home calling his wife because he didn't understand what happened. It was, <laughs> it, oh, my God. I I felt like I was going to win the gold for sure after that day. But, uh, you know, he I let him touch my legs all day long. But once he touched them, I grabbed a hold of that son of a bitch, and I plopped him through through every time for a big three-point throw, you know, and I did it to him like 30 times, and he just, he couldn't figure it out, and he went home. Woo! Yeah, but he uh, he ended up taking third, third in the Olympics. He was the biggest story. He was the big, Dan, he, I, a little bit of my wisdom here. So, we're walking into the opening ceremonies, 
and we're the last team. Wrestling is the last team. So we're not walking perpendicular to the infield. We're walking in single file line towards the end. You know what I mean? Because we all wanted to be on the inside of the track to possibly get some air time. And I was even more smart. I positioned myself right by Chris Campbell because I knew he was the big story going in. And sure enough, man, I got about a second on uh, the opening ceremonies. I got a second <laughs> on TV, brother. <laughs> Woo! But the, 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 the people were yelling at us. Get moving. They were just, you, they're trying to yell at bowls. You know what I mean? Get moving. No, nah, we're fine. We're fine. Baby. That, uh, I wasn't going to do the opening ceremonies. I wasn't going to go because I was under, I was trying to keep my weight on and it was so hot. And I'm laying in the room. I refused to go. I said, no way. And they, they kept sending they kept sending a higher up in, you know, a higher up on the one on the pole that could get me to go. And then finally they sent in the last dog. Who do you think it was, Dan? The Shear. One of the Shear brothers. Nah, I whooped his ass to make the team. I ain't worried about that son of a bitch. Okay. Well, I'm good. Hey. There you go, Fry, the big man. Yeah. <laughs> they sent the big man in there, and he just looked at me and said, Coleman, get up, put your fucking clothes on, you're going. I, yeah, I just had no answer. Like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm so glad I did because, oh, my God, that was so memorable, man. That was a blessing. So blessed to be there, man. That was one of the coolest things ever. All right. Well, again, you, you've had a you've had a great story career, freaking pride. Okay, you 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 go from amateur wrestling, you jump into MMA, and uh, I I know quickly a couple of the different organizations. But pride was one of those uh, organizations that you work for as well. Yeah. And you're the the Grand Prix winner. Yes. What, tell tell the tell the folks what what well what to get do. in. I got my ass whooped. Three times in a row to UFC. I don't make excuses, but I made reasons for myself why I lost. You know, I mean, they're not. I'm not going to tell the public why. Well, I will, but uh, I had to convince myself I can still do this shit because three straight losses, and one of them being a uh, 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 head kick KO, where my head damn near got separated. Holy shit! You talk about something you never. Why well, you never dreamed of happening, and it does. It happens to me, but I, I got up, and fortunately, I didn't remember anything because, you know, I don't know how people don't come back from something like that because I don't remember it. You know what I mean? So it, it, it wasn't a problem coming back. I blocked it. It was dead. It just happened. I don't remember. And I seen it on tape, and simple mistake, fatigue. You know, my hands were down because I was tired, you know, but, but, uh, those three losses, I never, I can't say never. Cause once in a while, the worm of doubt came in there because the fans just abused me. I'm 33 years old champ to being laughed at by everybody. And well, I didn't let it get I didn't let it get to me, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm not gonna admit I read it. So just reading it, you gotta convince yourself that these guys are all worthless nobodies who don't know nothing about Mark Coleman or about being world class. Only a few people have any idea what it's like to be a world class wrestler for one. Very few in that group, Dan. But to be a world-class MMA fighter, now that's a whole different level. And that's what I am. So. Well, I, I want to bring it, I want to bring some attention to uh, to what you're doing right now. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll still probably bounce back and forth on some other questions, but during the interview, basically you've been 
mobile. You're 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 moving. And so let's let's go into the more modern uh, Mark Coleman and what you're doing for yourself right now with all this movement, things that nature. I mean, was it for? Did you get a scare of health? Uh, was there is there a reason for all this movement and what you're doing? You know now. Um. Well, yeah, a lot of those things, all all of the above, but it all started with uh, two years. Just three months ago, um, crawling out of my deathbed, literally crawling out of my deathbed, uh, an extended stay hotel room, minimum thousands of beer cans, not full. Every one of them fuckers were empty. Of course, the fridge had some in it because that's all I was worried about at the point. It's all I cared about. That was, that's it's all I needed. So that, that went on. Probably 10 years after my last fight, I had it under control pretty good for a while. You know, I was just a binge, you know, partying drunk. But uh, you have to hit rock bottom before you'll fucking ever quit or surrender. And I know, I know Don knows, man, we're like, rock bottom for any human being is is way, way, way down there. But for me, you know, it, it you know, it, it, you have to... Mark, you there? I think we, we, we just lost you. You there? Uh, okay, we hear you now. Just, just yeah, the, the screen or something like that just kind of froze up and uh, we lost the audio. You there? Yep, we hear you now. All right, so, so rock bottom, I don't think it would have ever happened. I don't think it would have ever happened to me. Hey, Alexa, turn that off. I don't think it would have ever happened to me unless uh, the Lord puts certain people and situations in front of you, you know, to, to, to test you and, uh, you know, I, I I hooked up with a woman a couple years after my last fight, 2010, and well, it didn't go well. It didn't go well, but I got a I got a nine year old daughter out of the situation. But this woman helped me hit rock bottom. I'm drinking. I'm picking it up. I'm picking it up. And finally, I got the courage to leave her. My daughter was five years old and could talk to me. So. I, I finally left her for good. I knew I was going to leave her, but I had to stay there for my kid. Finally, I left her. I checked into a hotel room, and I tried to quit drinking. I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it on my own. I quit for about three months at the most, but every day, every fucking day, that's all you think about, you know? And when are you going to snap? That's the only answer. Unless you get help doing it on your own, that's, that was my experience with it. No, it's just a matter of seconds before... I fucking opened that beer, and that was it. And as soon as I opened that first one, it's over for me. I'm drinking them all, and I'm getting more, and I'm not stopping. But fast forward to, to three years away from this woman drinking, I damn near drank myself to death. I stayed away from the other drugs. I did all the other drugs plenty of times. But I stayed away from them because I thought they would kill me. You know what I mean? But really, the, the worst one and the one that kills most people is fucking alcohol. But I stayed away from the other ones because I could I could monitor myself with the booze. You know, I was when you gotta count how many you're drinking a day, there's a problem. You know what I mean? So I was not in denial of me having a problem, Dan. I was an admitted alcoholic, but nobody could do nothing because I secluded myself like all alcoholics do in this room by myself. Not even the maid came in there. So you can only imagine and you can't imagine it's, it's way worse than anything you could ever think of. But I found way to my bed. I had five pillows on my bed and I had my bed and a bunch of blankets and I had a fridge there that I could fill up and Mark Coleman was dying. But he was okay with it because this is the what this is the way life's going to be after fighting, and you know, 
nobody came over. Finally, you know, it was getting real bad. I started picking up it. There was no longer wake well, up with a okay, hangover. Mark, Mark, not, not, okay, I, I'm sure my friend wrote you, but did, did any of your friends try to, you know, any of the other Hammer House members, stuff like that, did anyone try to yeah. call us, talk to you or? I was the boss, bro. Dan, nobody, no, nobody could tell me nothing. Everything was, well, yeah, people would call, but I'm doing great. No, I'm not drinking very much. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you know, you just cover it up or you don't answer the phone and they give up. People give up because they should give. You know, it, it's hard, you know, but nobody had the courage. I would cut them off before they would get the sentence out of their mouth. I would just say, I'm doing all right. I'm working on it before they even tried, you know, and, and I was I was too big, too loud. And, and and but but there was there was one person that kind of and you understand why he fits the the Lord put this guy there because it's son of a bitch is the only guy and it ain't because of his size because I ain't afraid of no size of a man but the size of that man fits his brain and his heart and his personality. Wes Sims showed up at my at my hotel room at ten a.m. one day. Actually showed up at 10 p.m. one night, the night before. I didn't remember this because it was close. He walked in, he came in, and he told me he cleaned at least at least 10 to 15 big garbage bags full of fucking beer cans and some vodka and some whatever else was in there. And I was passed out on the bed, man. I said, I didn't want to hear it, you know. I need some sleep and... And he did this shit, and he left, carried it all the way out to the trash. He, he was worried I was going to die that night and that they would find me in this room, and that'd be the worst thing for my family to have to go through. And so that's what he was mainly worried about. He showed back up at 10 a.m. the next day. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't sleep the whole fucking night. You sleep for an hour, you wake up, and... You grab another beer, man. That's how it works. So you, there wasn't no day and night. You get an hour here and there, and and uh, you really well, have no idea. You almost really have no idea as to how much your daily consumption was because you simply yeah, just yeah, buy, yeah, buy more. You know, I, I kept track of it, but oh. you know, well, I didn't keep track of it too well. But I just tried to keep it under a thousand. You know what I mean? It, it, it was enough to kill you. Let's put it that way. <laughs> But hey, wow. you, know, but wow. you gotta pay for this shit too, Dan. I, you know, you gotta pay for this shit too. I'm not obviously, I'm not, I'm not a functional drunk. I'm not really making money. I'm not doing anything. I gave up on life, man. I, I just, I, I, this woman cut me off from my family, my friends, uh, everything. I wasn't allowed to do anything, and I don't care if you call me a stupid coward pussy. I ain't the only one that's done this. I didn't do it because of her cunt pussy. Literally, I didn't do it for her pussy. I did it for the thing that came out of her pussy, my daughter. So I stayed there with this woman getting abused physically and mentally. Physically was fun. Mentally, yes, she played games. And it beat me down. I didn't even know. I didn't know who I was. I forgot who I was. The booze just kept adding to it. The fog I was in... The fog I was in. So finally, Wes Sims knocks on the door, 10 a.m. And, and I let him in, and I'm sitting on the end of the bed. I didn't lay back down. I sat on the end of the bed in a very submissive position, You're looking down. And, you know, he... uh He was Why? representing thousands and thousands of people, how they felt about me at that point. Terrified. So he asked me if I was trying to kill myself. No. I said I just didn't care though. I I ain't got the courage to kill myself. I didn't want to die. I had things I wanted to do. 
Discipline was the, was the last word that I ever used. Discipline. Uh, I hadn't worked out one time, Dan, in Don, 12 fucking years. I was 280 pounds. Wow. It was all my belly. It wasn't, none of it was in my legs or my arms. My arms were skinny and flabby. My my legs were chicken legs. My ass was melted away. It was uh, 80 pounds just sitting in my belly. That beer, that beer gut, that thing's real. Because I didn't eat much. But but uh, Sims, uh, you know, he said we're we're going to the hospital, and uh, I said no, 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 not today. Fuck no, not today. I got shit to do. Basically, I ain't done nothing in fucking years. Well, since I, you know, I raised my daughter through all this. I raised my daughter for four years. I was a stay-at-home dad four and a half years. I stayed at home with her. And then when I left is when the, the alcohol really picked up, you know. But when I was with her, I didn't drink during the day until the mama got home. And then I first thing I did was drink some beer to, 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 to get over eight hours with the little kid. As great as it was, it was hard. I mean, it, it was the coolest thing ever. But, man, it's the second time I did it. I did it with my other kids, too, my first two kids. I was with them fuckers. Not them fuckers. Sorry about that. I was with them. And, and <laughs> I said, I said, fuckers is because what? I was, I was fighting you. No, no, I didn't have them yet. You know, I had, I had them when I'm trying to defend my damn belt, man. They was in the baby. They was in the womb when I'm trying to, woo. Yeah, man. It was crazy. It was a roller coaster. But they are my life. My kids are my life. My old, I live with my oldest one, uh, uh, I'm so close to all of them. It's, it's the only thing I really, really care about. I care about my fans a lot because I've been laughed at here, Dan. Yeah. I've been, I showed my January 1st, I showed my 280 pound belly to the world and I got laughed at. And my whole journey, I, you know, I had, you know, most people, most people pull for me, 100,000 Instagram people, but. You know, a handful here and there laugh, telling old man, grandpa, what are you doing? Because I, I made my plans clear from day one. I will fight again. And when you show yourself at 280, 58 years old, and all these cowards sitting on their fucking couch with not a goddamn thing to do in this fucking world, they're going to take advantage of it. Please sit down, wow. you fat old piece the of key, shit. Key, keyboard. Ass. Keyboard warriors, Mark. I mean, yeah, uh, but, most people would never say that to your face, but that there's a lot oh, of people I, I, hell underneath no, they, the, they, that, would, that keyboard. I would do the down right to them. Over where? It just fucking backhand was the most brilliant maneuver I've ever seen. When down right backhand, you know, the, the, the fans that want to take it outside, he goes, out where? He backed him right in the fucking hand. <laughs> right, you know, the dude's head. No, the dude's head hit him right in the head. The dude's head hit him right in the hand. You see that? Yeah, he headbutted me. He attacked me. Headbutted my hand. <laughs> but I your answer, Don, your answer when they when they questioned you about a lady, you said, "I no, I didn't punch him." Nope. <laughs> Over where? Oh my God! I that <laughs> is so fucking viral, Don. You're a million. God damn! You got to get up on that stage and just do some <laughs> comedy. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I do well, let's get back time. to the set. Let's get back to the shit. I'll try to make it quicker. You know, so Sims told me we're going to the hospital. And I said, no. But then I said, well, wait a minute. Because I always wanted to quit drinking. You know, Don, you want to quit. But it's easy. Yeah. You know, it's just so. But I said, <laughs> okay, wait a minute. I'll go to the hospital because they're going to give me drugs in there, Don. That's how bad so I, yeah, sure enough, I went in there and they gave me the painkillers. The I was addicted to clonopin too. I took those for fifteen years. The uh, the antidepressants or whatever they're fucking uh, the whatever they're called. But uh, I didn't think I could live life without those damn things because of anxiety and all that shit. But uh, uh, they they was giving me those and painkillers. And after the week, yeah, I was I got off my 
alcohol addiction for now. You know, I got off it the withdrawal symptoms. I that one with the week in the hospital, I didn't fucking move, man. I lay there. I hadn't been in the shower for fucking months. Literally months. And uh finally the doc said of day four, he said, said, Hey Mark, he said, You gotta take a shower, bro. And <laughs> yeah, you got those beer sweat coming out of you pretty good. <laughs> oh god, it was more than beer, man. It was and and then you know, I did take a shower, but I didn't want to take another one, you know, it just wasn't something I love doing, you know what I mean? But uh um after the weeks, you know, Wes Sims. My best friend, he say, you know, he helped save my life. I saved my life, but Wes Sims helped. He was one of the few men that could probably have got the job done. Well, the job ain't done because I got out of the hospital feeling good. And sure enough, you know, I mean, I know I can't go drink right in front of Wes, but I didn't really want to drink, not yet at least. But, you know, he, he said, uh, I said, take me to my, my mom and dad. I wanted to see my mom and dad. And he said, we'll go there. And then... I was planning on spending a couple of days at my parents' house, but he said, nope, I already got it planned. Um, checking you in. We got a rehab place ready, waiting for you today. Really? And Wes I set said, that up for you? Well, Wes and my ex-wife, actually. Wes okay. and my ex-wife, they fucking uh, set it up for me. I said, what the fuck? Because I got out of the hospital after a week. I said, take me to my hotel room, man. I got uh -oh. shit in there. Oh my God, my family had to come down and clean that out. And then they, you know, it was the most horrifying thing they've ever been through. And I said, Are you kidding me? Where's my shit? <laughs> 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 uh, it's in the shitter. But anyway. <laughs> uh, uh, See, okay, just just to just to put a point out what fiscally sound fact that I would have probably done there, Mr. Fry, with all of those empty beer cans, beer bottles. Now, would Dad ever just put those in the trash, or would Dad ever take them back and got the deposit That's for it. all of those cans of I can't be, Hey, Wes Sims is right up your alley, and I'm really surprised. You know, he, he, 15 bags, you know what I mean? Good well, old... Again, uh, I, again, I, 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 I started drinking them IPAs, man. I found out them IPAs carry, like, fucking 10 percent alcohol compared to the three percent some of them beers man so uh -huh. i didn't need a ton man it was powerful stuff yeah I was, don, I did, listened, don did I you ever don, uh, uh i'm just asking don there don did you ever get a chance to meet uh, uh west sims oh yeah i know west we, we did a movie together oh okay all right well, again i just I just make sure because you know, people that are viewing this i want i want them to kind of know Wes was like, I always thought that Wes was a, a basketball player because Wes is so tall. Yeah, he yeah. was. And, and, he was. Oh, he was a basketball player? He was a basketball player, and he came to me, and I kind of said, what the fuck do you want from me? You know, you, can you wrestle? He goes, a little bit. I go, what do you mean a little bit? You can't wrestle a little bit. And then I said, can you can you box? He goes, a little bit. I go, what, what the fuck? What about jujitsu? He said, a little bit. And he a little bit meant he he done it once or twice, but no, he just came from college. He was a love sick. He showed up at my door. I had to fight a guy that was six foot nine, Ricardo Marais in Japan. My doctor told me to take care of this West Sims guy, and I I, I talked to him, but I didn't know what I was going to do for me. And finally, I got to fight a guy six ten. I said, "Come on over, Wes. And he showed up at my door, six nine, two hundred and fifteen pounds, man, just. It was the skinniest little thing you ever seen. I looked up and I just said, "What the fuck?" But we went to the gym, Dan, and I took that son of a bitch down real easy, and I put him in the Dan Severn uh, side headlock choke, uh, the the Mark Coleman darts or whatever you want to call that thing. I put him in that bitch, Dan. I swear to you, he fought it for a good three, two, three, four minutes, and I couldn't get him to tap, but I. I could barely hear him breathing. You got to understand, Wes Sims was a freak of nature. He was super, super far by strong, and his neck was the only thing that was decent size on him. You know what I mean? But uh, uh -huh. uh, I could hear him barely breathing. He wouldn't tap. I finally had to let go of it. I just let go of it for a second, 
let the blood get in there. And uh, I got to charge my phone, damn it. I let the blood get in and I recranked it. Then I then I put a whooper on him for for about I, I got him to tap real quick after that. Then I got him to tap about 50 more times. And then then on the way home, you know, I just said, Well, what do you think? You know, you gonna go back to college, bro? <laughs> yeah. You know, he 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 was very fine with what he did. And next thing you know, a couple couple weeks later, he's looking at me as his manager saying, well, when am I going to fight? And I said, well, when you're fucking ready, man, you don't know nothing. He well, says, well, who thing. says who? Says who, he said. I said, whatever. And and he wouldn't let me train him because I trained him for the first couple weeks when I after this experience, I trained him and he couldn't. No, no, he said, no fucking way is he going to listen to me as a coach. You know, there's just no way. And he's doing his own thing. But then he says, well, what's next for me? I'm ready. And he says, I'm fighting Dan Severn. I said, what the fuck? you going to fight Dan Severn? I said, you're not ready. I said, you're not ready. He's going to fucking beat you up. And, he, you know, he did that. But then next thing you know, we became best friends. Best fucking friends. He made it all the way to the UFC. I'm so proud of that. So how did, for him to make it to the UFC was just, he wasn't afraid to say anything on the mic. As you know, he was very, very cocky, very confident on the mic. He looked good. He was 6'10". Uh, he got up to two, uh, you know, after me and me forgot about his girlfriend, he got up to like 260 pounds. He was a super, super strong man. He just didn't have, he didn't have no wrestling. He didn't have, you know, very little jujitsu. But if he got them legs around you, he's dangerous. Come up with his, a few of his own moves and shit. But, uh. Yeah, we became best friends. The next thing you know, he's in there uh, with the only man courage enough. I mean, everybody tried. Don't get me wrong. I had, a, I got my mom and dad here. I got brothers and sisters. I got a lot of friends that they just didn't have a chance because you, I could cut you off real quick on the phone. You know what I mean? Just click, you know, click and grab my beer. But uh, he got me in there. And then after a week, I gave the rehab a try. I told him I'd give him a month because I got things to do. And the first thing they teach you in rehab is, what do you mean you got things to do? You haven't done nothing for years. <laughs> you ain't got nothing to do but sit in here and listen. And I was like a little kid in school, and I didn't like school. I couldn't pay attention. So I was the same way. I couldn't pay attention to the, the instructor and all the other. I, I, I checked in, and, and, and immediately I knew – I was with people that are just like me, even though we are, we all came from so far different areas, but I could tell we all had to say, I was never in denial. I just was never willing to get any help. And now I'm going there, but I, I, I'm having a tough time listening because of my attention span problems is, is zero, Dan. I've never had any coaches. Still haven't. I still hard. Well, I've had a few coaches, but I'm saying, you know, I did it all on my own. I like doing things on my own, but this is one thing that Mark Coleman can't do on his own. It'd be impossible, impossible for me to stay sober on my own. First, I need my higher power. My higher power is everybody's got a different higher power. Mine is God. And this fucker's in he he's in control of everything. And and I no longer fear anything or anybody. Um uh, I cannot control anything anybody does, and I really don't care anyways, and I don't really give a fuck about what anybody thinks about me or wants to judge me. It don't matter. I'm free. I'm at, I'm at peace. Um, um, I, I surrendered. I, I checked in there to rehab, and then finally, about three weeks into it, I started catching on. And my fog was clearing up. My my head was, Dan, it, it takes years to get the drugs and alcohol out of your system. Don, it takes years. So I, you ain't going to do it. So the emotions are coming back. The emotions are crazy. And, 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 and the people I met in there, I became very good friends with. There's only 5% of us that are in there every day. 
staying, you know, checking in. We had to check in every morning. Mark Coleman, alcoholic. Today I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling, uh, uh, you know, no cravings today. Uh, I'm close to the Lord today. Spiritually, yes. Uh, physically, I feel like a fucking piece of shit. You know what I mean? Because when I checked in, I was literally looking 80 years old, so there was, it, it was, you used to fight, you know, but everybody, eventually, we became very good friends, and there's only 5% of it that usually make it that even give it a try, but uh, I think I had a little bit to do with it, maybe I'm wrong, but I got at least 15 people out of that little short, you know, 20 people from that time. I, I ended up staying for five months, but I stay in touch with 20, 25 of these people that they're still fucking sober. And that, that, that way beats the percent of 5%. It's way, way up there. And it, it's truly amazing to me. It became my life to just have peace and calmness is cool. Dan, I'm, I'm, I, 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 you would agree I'm very much calmer now, right? No, 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 exactly. We'll get with you, but you, you're calm. You can go, you actually can remember what happened yesterday, too. So. I'm joking. But yeah, I, re, I remember everything. My, my, there is no CTE. I'm so blessed. I had concussions, not from fighting. I got like two or three from fighting, probably, but uh, my concussions came from wrestling and more importantly, I gave myself multiple concussions in high school football. I knocked I knocked the shit out of myself a few times. But I got no CT. My memory is way sharper than really I could ever remember because even before I started drinking, my mind wasn't right. I was just too focused on one thing because I didn't I didn't have the ability to I would read, 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 but my mind wasn't really reading what I was reading, so I couldn't remember a lot of it so i'd have to read things so you know much as i read i should be a genius in every every area but i just didn't consume it enough you know i i read for hours just you know i read the newspaper all my life two or three different newspapers a night that was my go-to in between training get off my feet recover read the sports page but i read the first page read some other shit in there and it just take me a long time but it really I just never really was able to absorb it, but now everything's so clear, so focused. Uh, I stayed for five months. They finally let me go. They let me out, and uh, it was uh, very fucking scary, man. Well, yeah, I mean, not really scary, but just like you really feel like you're on your tiptoes, man, because it's all you think about. You're out. You're free. You can't go drag a beer, and nobody can. Because I was drug tested, I was. They had. They. I had. I got held accountable for five months. I couldn't snap then. Now I'm out on my own, and literally I couldn't. You know, I. I didn't go through drive-through carryouts because that was that was my get the beer to drive-through. But uh, and when I would go to any like convenience store, I would feel the fucking buzz where the booze is coming from. I, I would I would walk in and I'd know right where it's at. I would feel it pulling me that way. I wasn't going to buy it. I was scared of it. I was terrified of it because I knew it just almost killed me. But I'd go over next to it and uh, you know, get me some Red Bulls. I switched to, every, you know, alcoholic, he always gets to switch to something else. So I smoked the cigarettes and I'm switching to caffeine. So Red Bulls, I started killing Red Bulls. But, uh, you know, but the fear... It was just there, you know. Then every day you wake up, and your first thing I do is thank the Lord, man, for taking away the obsession to drink because it is an obsession, Dan. It's a hard, hard obsession. It makes you it it makes you feel good. I did it because it made me feel good. Everybody's got excuses for why they drink, but the truth is, it makes you feel good. That's why I drink it. So sure. Uh, well, some people again. Some people they drink and they get happy. Some people get sad. I mean, it just all depends on. I guess I think some of your personality on that. But uh, um, as of what it comes from me. But I mean, uh, you know, I I knew when I first going back to like West Sims. When I first met West Sims, 
he he had the the tie on. He actually, I actually thought he was doing more like a managerial type of duties and stuff like that for you and Kevin Random and and. Uh, uh, well, he he I he uh, when I when I first recruited him, I jokingly gave him the name West the Secretary Sims because he immediately became. Uh, he was a businessman right away. I would, I would book appearances and uh, I would have to drink so I can't be driving. So he'd be my driver. He'd be the bag carrier. He would set it up and he, I would pay him handsomely. He was, we became really good friends on them trips, man. Thank God he was there. <laughs> and uh, oh, we had some fun, man. That's all I got to say. I I introduced him, you know what I mean, to the world. <laughs> But uh, um, we 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 came a long way. I mean, I forget what I was talking about. Well, that's all right. Well, again, well, what about? Uh, I know that you're uh, you're on the again just to switch gears a little bit. I mean, you're on this carnivore diet now, right? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. And 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 certain types of supplements. Well, yeah. you want to talk let about me, any let of me, that let stuff? Me out. Sorry, sorry. I checked out. I'll I'll fast forward to that. But I I, okay. I got out. I got free. And, and 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 you're you're just so happy, but you're so timid, so so scared, and and but then you find out how how blessed you are to have still uh, go hang out with my mom and dad. And I never would have patience to just sit there and hang out with my mom and dad. I never had the patience, but then I realized how. Really. Dan, I, mean, I never had any patience to do anything. You know what I mean? I just no patience at all. It, I think I had a lot of patience during the fight, though. Yeah, that's kind of, I mean, but how old, how old are your parents now? 81, 80. So just, oh. I got to hang out with them and re reunite with all the people that really, you know, they, they, they were not, they were just, everybody was sad for me. Everybody was felt sorry for Mark Coleman. Everybody... My family, I didn't know everybody this. I, I go, you know, I, I didn't go home for Christmas in 10 years. I mean, this woman kept me from doing anything, but I didn't know these people felt this horrible for me. They felt sorry for me, but because, like I said, I was fine. I thought I was fine living in that hotel. As long as I could pay the bills, had five pillows, I had a car that worked, uh, and had food, had beer, had, had pillows. And that's it. I wasn't looking for women. What happened to me, Dan, is when I left this last woman, my desire for women is, is just gone. You know, it's I love women, but I don't I don't want to just fuck them now. You know what I mean? I don't want to just fuck them. I don't I just want to talk to them at, at the most. So it's become very easy to pick up a woman if I wanted to, because I have no interest in picking her up. But when you want to pick them up, it's very difficult. What I what what I had, you know. Now it's very easy, but I have no desire, and that's what that's what gave me the calmness and the peace. When it's I I don't want to treat women like like I feel like I did. I don't think I was great with women, you know. I, I didn't abuse them or anything like that. I just used them and went about my way. But maybe they were maybe they were happy with it because it's not like. Not like I made it a Super Bowl every time I got down in in, in the sack, bro. You know what I mean? I just uh, I was selfish, worried about myself. Well, Why should I mean, you being different than the woman? Yeah. What? <laughs> Why should you be different than the woman? Let's get down <laughs> on here, Dan. Let's go. That's what I'm talking about. You're damn right. <laughs> but I I was the woman, but they. You know, all my friends were trying to do a Super Bowl, man, the monster. You're going to do a Super Bowl. These women, that's why they're calling every fucking day, 10 times a day. And I got to answer the phone and say he's not here. You know what I mean? But, you know, my women never called because it wasn't that good. <laughs> I pick it up when I had to with the right one, you know. Well, it's kind of like my fight career, like a roller coaster. Some good ones, some bad ones, you know? <laughs> depends on what my mood was. Actually, it just depends on if I was on the booze or not. Honestly, my whole career. Uh, unfortunately for you two guys, I was sober. I trained my ass off for both of you because I was I respected both of you. And uh, 
um, I had to be in the top of my game to beat you guys. But um, um, like, oh, oh, poor, oh, Marie Smith. Uh, that son of a bitch is one lucky dude because uh, uh, after I after I beat you, Dan, and, uh, fuck, I thought I was uh, I was the king of the mountain. I knew there was tougher guys out there, but I, I I didn't. I just I thought I was the king of the fucking mountain, and I forgot how I got there by fucking a lot of hard work. What and, uh, uh, where, where did your where did your striking uh, come all from there, Mark? Who uh, who'd you work with? Because again, wrestling doesn't teach the striking aspect. I mean, wrestling teaches you body position, body control, but where where'd you get the striking? Nobody. Nobody. Really? I, I didn't I didn't have no coaches, Don. I oh let's say Richard Hamilton, but do you really think I was gonna listen to Richard Hamilton? So he tried to show me some striking, but I learned everything in my whole career and I still do it now. I've been watching Matt Brown for the last five years, for the last four years. Uh two of it was drunk. Two of it I was in there watching him drunk, but the last two years I've been watching Matt Brown sober. Well, I learn from watching and I do it. And now my stand up is going fucking it, it's I'm very, very, very dangerous right now, Dan. I, I I'm 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 way sharper than people don't know the only guy that I was trying to fucking hit on the feet was you. You're the only guy that I've tried gonna plan on trying to punch first. Everybody else I was taking down. You I decided I'm gonna swing it out with you. But everybody well, else, again, everybody because else. because you you you're you're a wrestler just like me. I I again people always said when, when they would ask me a question like who was my tough support? I said it would be another wrestler because yeah. that's the strength that I bring to it. And uh, you know I, I did not do, but only a couple of training camps in the first place. You know. So, yeah, I, I got you. But I just uh, it, my guys in practice: Randleman, Wes Sims, Brandon Hinko, Nick Nutter. All these pretty badass motherfuckers, if they were on here, they would say, yes, sir, Dan, he got me. I fucking knocked them all down. I was a savage killer in straight boxing, but when the when the, when the the game changed to MMA and the money was on the line, I was no longer a boxer. I was, I couldn't pull the fucking trigger, but against you... My mind was I have to hit this guy first. You know what I mean? I, I well, I, I didn't have to. I decided I was going to, and it worked. Uh, <laughs> one one other time, one other fight. I just I went in with the same attitude over in Holland, and, and I faked the double leg. I just uh, fainted a little bit, threw a straight right hand down the middle. I knocked this uh, Muay Thai guy down. I, I I pretty much knocked him out with the punch, but I stepped in so fast I body locked him right down. And he woke up when he hit the ground, and then I had to. I finished him with the submission. But uh, you know, when I when I, when I want to throw a fuck, hey, on the streets, I'm fucking undefeated, and I didn't ground and pound everybody on the streets. You can't go to the ground on the streets. My fucking hands were deadly. I mean, when I hit you, it hurt. When I when I hit people, it hurts, and it's it's still true to the, today. So, you know, I got this celebrity boxing thing coming up. Well, that's uh, what I wanted to get around to because I knew that uh, be, being with you last weekend at the uh, uh, autism event that we, we took place in, you know, you're talking about some other stuff you have come up and I definitely want to get around to you've got an actual boxing event coming on up. So I want to talk about the, that and I want to also talk about any other future pro projects you have coming up as well. So let's, first off, there was, I thought there was slap boxing on, on the table that was there yes, for you sir. first. Yeah, yeah. So January 1st, uh, uh, Liver King and me, I was good friends with Liver King. Not good friends. I just met him over. I liked one of his videos on Instagram. I sent him a message because I was I was inspired by the man's physique, and, and okay. I liked his I liked his uh, his intensity. But so I messaged him a few times, and then um, January first, I'm I'm two years sober, something like that. But I hadn't trained in 12 years. I hadn't, I couldn't even walk to the car, Dan. I mean, you could have whooped my ass so easy January 1st. I would have, you had the last 
you would have had to survive 10 seconds and then that's it. I would have been having a heart attack. You know what I mean? That's it. You got to, I'd had a couple of big swings and then, you know, it was over. I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't even walk to the car without my leg just fucking being a little bit sore. You know what I mean? It was, it was 280 and Liver King uh, sent me a message saying, you know, let's go. He goes, you, you, you start today, you transform yourself, you know, you, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, brother. You know what I mean? I just went with that and said, okay. I said, I'm starting today. And and honestly, I, I put the phone down, and that's all it took. You know, all it took was somebody, well, he's going to he's gonna sponsor me. So, yes, he's gonna, if he's going to invest in me, I'm going to have to post this on the Internet, and I'm going to, I'm going to fucking tell everybody right away when I take them a shirt off. I got laughed at, Dan, for six months. I still get laughed at. But uh, holy shit, I had the courage to show some fucking nasty pictures of myself. I showed myself shadow boxing, and they're basically pathetically slow as the molasses and hilarious. But it gave everybody in the world a chance. But my fans were just like, please, Mark. They respectfully said, please don't do this. You know, it oh, wasn't, really? a, oh, there wasn't a bunch. Of, well, well, they said, I love what you're doing, but please don't box. Everybody's terrified. Everybody's terrified for my life. And, you know. Okay. What, what, what events come at first? Because I said, I knew that you were, I thought you had something coming up with Tim Sylvia and, and the slap boxing. No, first. no, no. I, 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 I befriended the the the, the 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 original slap fight is in, in America. It's uh, J T Tilly's his name. He's he uh, slap fights. What his promotion's called. It's been around for five years. I watch. I've been watching this stuff for five years. I'm fascinated by it. I've been watching it overseas for years. Oh, I, I thought this was with Dana White, but it's not with Dana White. Then. No, 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 not, not originally. But uh, I, I I talked to Dana White, but about it, but uh. This guy, he just said, "Why don't you come on in and you could be one of the catchers on my show?" Because he he holds underground power slap. It's an underground sport right now. Dana White's trying to take an underground sport and bring it public. It's a lot harder than he anticipated because obviously it's more violent than the UFC, brother. Yeah, because well, uh, well, there's... for 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 a short period of time it is, but. You know, these guys are yeah, getting hit. Well, again, they, Dana, they, Dana, Dana White's argument is, well, these guys are getting hit 100 times in one night. These power slap guys are only getting hit three. You know what I mean? But, whoo, there's three powerful, powerful slaps. But anyways, I was interested because I was in my, hey, man, when I put my mind to something, Dan, it's over. Liver King said this, and I, I had to take a look at myself in the mirror finally and say, how fast can I transform this because it's going to be, it's going to be abusive, and I don't like being abused, Dan. So how fast can I transfer myself? I knew I was going to get it pretty well all the way back. Uh, but I didn't know how fast. And then all of a sudden, I became obsessed with this challenge from Liver King and, and the opportunity to, 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 to partnership up with this guy I, I love and respect him 100. percent He he took some steroids. He took the steroids. This and that. He got busted. He owned up to it. He's been clean for 250 days. You can see the difference in his body, but it's a difference that looks better. Uh, he's doing it clean right now. He don't have to do it clean. He's not getting drug tested. He he just had to come. He, the carnivore diet. I believe in a thousand percent. I eat meat every day. I will eat the shit out of some raw meat. I will eat all that other stuff. I don't have to do it because I do it once in a while just because just I like the pleasure of doing it, the way it feels, makes you feel. But uh, Liver King supplements, I get all his supplements. They're fucking very expensive supplements. All they really are is food, you know, liver, uh, Beef, bone marrow, uh, organs. Uh, his protein powder is the whole fucking cow. 
mm-hmm. chopped up and put in there. It's nose to tail, mm-hmm. and 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 it's that's it. That that there alone is is half my calories a day. Then the Liver King bars, the the bars with some creatine in them. I could eat literally twenty of those a day, but I'm not allowed to because of the creatine, unfortunately. But I eat I eat five of those a day. I eat about three, what's four. The, uh, what's, the, what's the creatine going to do for you? Uh, the creatine. Their studies are showing it's good for the brain, Dan. All these studies. There, I'm 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 in this Cleveland Clinic uh, brain study right now. But uh, Matt Brown's been in it. But creatine, creatine, and I I like it. The only reason I like it is because I hear it's really good for concussions and all that shit. So I don't know know much more about it. I'm not too worried about creatine. Hey, hey, for some reason, it puts about five pounds on your water weight. You hold more water or something with it, but sure, I'm, sure. I, I only like cells. it. Expansive uh, cells. Yeah, it expands. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I, I just heard it's great for the brain, but no, I, with Liver Kings, and I take about three, four, five of his uh, protein powders shakes a day, so I get my half, half my calories uh, from his supplement and the other half, I fast 20 hours every day, every, every day for the last six months, minus a day or two, literally every day, almost I fast 20 hours a day that I'll eat at first. I only ate for a one hour window. So I was fasting 23 eating for one hour, but now I give myself about a three, four hour window. And, uh, well, I, I take the liver King supplements. Um, religiously every day and then uh one of my favorite places to go is uh bw bw3 wings here in columbus because they cook in tallow oil and tallow oil is very very expensive it's beef it's beef beef oil beef tallow oil and uh they're one of the few restaurants that cook in it it, it, that's what's killing America is these seed oils and this nasty, nasty oil that's made for a car, not for human beings. Seed oils are the worst garbage you could ever put in your body. That's why them fries taste so fucking good. But <laughs> no, I'm not kidding you. But uh, so I, I go to B Dubs, I get myself a couple of double burgers. I don't eat the bread, of course. I eat the burgers, I get myself about six to 12 wings. And uh, then I'll get some, when I'm really doing it, I won't get the fries. I'll just stay with that. But uh, a lot of times you earn your carbs, man. And the amount of calories I'm burning every day, I earn some good, you know, some French fries cooked in the tallow. They're not so bad for you. And and, 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 and uh, so I go with that. And then, my God, I feel like, I feel better than ever, energy-wise, better than any time in my life. I sleep for six hours a night at the most, and even during that six hours, I'm up and down six times taking a piss. But you know, I might go to I go to bed at twelve. I'm up at six a.m. every day, and six a.m. today's no different. I was up at six a.m. and I got I I got six hours of training in before this phone call, and um, literally. I'm so wide awake, as you can see. I'll be wide awake all the way until I have to make myself. But I'll be so fucking sore by tonight. My body will be so sore. I walk 10 to 15 miles a day, but I advance walk. I walk on my toes. I walk backward. I walk on my heels. I walk on hills. I walk sideways. And I, I, I got egg weights in my hands, three-pound egg weights in my hands where I'm throwing punches like half the time. You know, sometimes I'm jogging, so... 10 to 15 miles a day of that shit. And and that's three, four, five hours right there. And, but then I'm going to the gym doing Muay Thai and I'm doing boxing. I mean, I'm I'm in the gym doing boxing. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running on top of it. I'm swimming all the time. The pool saved me because you could do anything in that pool that you can do above, uh, above water. Only it, doesn't hurt the old man's joints man so Mm -hmm. i did a lot of water stuff and a lot of walking on the hills backwards and sideways it strengthened because my legs were nothing i couldn't even walk you know a fucking quarter of a mile and all of a sudden i brought everything back to life 
my ligaments, my my ankles feel great, my knees. Everybody's laughing at my knees because I slipped one time, Dan, on one of these videos. I did a little slip, and they said, oh, the poor old man's knee's going to blow out. Oh, my <laughs> God. And I just, you know, just these fucking, they're, they're so abusive. But uh, I love it. I love it because I will get the last fucking laugh like I always do. I've already got it, man. I look like a fucking million bucks, according to myself. I think I look like a billion dollars. Fuck everybody else. You know, I'm the judge. I win. So, anyways, uh, I've been doing that, and, and the fucking fat melted off. But I literally don't even stop when I'm driving, Dan. I have a routine in my car. I can work every muscle group in, in, in my on my body in the car on a two, three, four hour drive. I will literally be working most of the time doing something. I got my egg waist in there. I'm doing so much stretching. I, I I can stretch so good with the shoulder, reaching back, reach up to the ceiling. And how far back can you reach? Can you go further? Well, fuck yes. And right now I can pretty much dislocate any muscle in my body. I can I can lay my my fucking chest, all my all my legs flat. I can. Well, I know. Those. I mean, even at the autism uh, walk, uh, you were showing me some of your flexibility there, and I was actually was very impressed with uh, your range of motion. It's gotten even better since then. I I took it to new levels since that day, since Saturday. I took it even to new levels, and I found out there's so much further I can go, and it's crazy, Dan. I mean, I'm I'm really, it, it's amazing, but. That's how I recover. I, I mean, I stretch so hard, it, it almost knocks me out. I'll hold it so long, and when I let go and release it, the blood rushes back to my brain. I love that feeling, man. You got to hold on to something or you'll fall down, baby. Woo! Always looking for that high. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, if this... Uh... If this boxing thing happens for you, slubby boxing thing happens, what uh, yeah. what time frame are you looking at? Oh, it's November fourth. So I've been uh, what the fuck? Oh, I've so been on the, so it, it, it is a solidified date, yeah. October fourth. Yeah, yeah. And, and where will it be held at? Tampa, Florida. Tampa, Florida. I got to get more details to make sure it's all finalized. It was supposed to be October fourteenth. Uh, they they just changed it to November fourth. They say it's a better date. Uh, Tampa, Florida. It's first is Montel Griffin. He's a 1992 Olympian. I followed him back in 92 because I followed the boxing team. And uh, I remember he got, he got beat. He took a silver, but he got screwed so bad. Uh, then he went on to beat Roy Jones, Jr. Roy Jones, Jr. Um, technicality, but, uh, he had a, he had a really good pro career. He's 54 years old. He's lightning fast, but he's 185 pounds. He's lightning fast. They got us wearing these big gloves. I'm not happy about the big gloves. I want smaller gloves. The big gloves, I don't even see how anybody can get hurt at all with these things on. But Are they, uh, are they 18 ounces then? Or? Yeah, at least 18, man. At least okay, 18. You, you say, okay, it's Montel Williams, you said? Montel Griffin. Oh, Griffin. Okay, sorry. Montelli Griffin, Montel Griffin, but uh, yeah, he's uh, but it's it's three one minute rounds unless I decide to say five one minute rounds, which I may do soon because you know it's going to be dirty boxing, Dan. I'm not going to stand in front of this guy. He's lightning fast, but I'm going to fucking corner him and I'm going to get dirty. I'm going to shove him into the ropes, and I'm going to attack his body until the ref yanks me off. You know what I mean? What the fuck? One minute round, a couple clinches, and a minute's over. <laughs> well, maybe everybody, we should... everybody swears up and down, Dan, that I'm a dead man. Everybody thinks I'm going to get just so embarrassed and so humiliated. It's unbelievable. Not everybody, the internet people. The internet people, not my people. Oh, the, the key my the keyboard the warriors. My my people in the gym, they're like, what? No, some of these warriors are actual fighters, you know what I mean? So it's not just all turds, it's actual people that fight that are laughing at me. You know, Wait, oh do my you know God. their names? Do you know their names? Or exactly, they, do they claim, man. Do they claim I, they're yeah, fucking fighters? I, 
I've told them all to come on over to Immortals Gym. You know, come on over. What the fuck? Sign a waiver, and I'm gonna fucking kill you. That's it. I'm gonna. Yeah, people. People don't let me hit him with full force in the gym right now. I cannot hit him with the full force. It, it, I'm not allowed to. You know, me. My my goal is Matt Brown. When I had this comeback started, uh, I said my goal is to get in there five round five minutes with you, Brown. He kind of gave me a little chuckle, man. And I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it. He gave me a little chuckle, and I said, well, all right. It's going to be sooner than later, Brown. And uh, it's going to be, you know, we, we can't really go at it because as soon as somebody hits the other guy hard, it's on. You know what I mean? So if you, you, there ain't, I don't know nothing about that light spar. Do you, Don? No. I had a tough, no, I had a tough time with it. I, I mean, I can't do it at all. Never, never and, been in one of those, yeah. But. Yeah, well, well, I do it all the time now with people, but it's like my jab is like, bink. And, and then they, they, they'll throw something back at me, but they'll be scared to hit me. And I'm like, would you please fucking hit me? You know what I mean, what the fuck was that? You know, it's, I don't know nothing about that life far. That's, that's for me and Brown because. I got to be able to go five minutes with them because it's going to be on and I can't just quit. You know what I mean? So yeah. I got to be ready to go five, but I think I'm going to put my hands on them. I'm going to be, I'm 239 pounds still Don. What are you weighing? Shit. I don't know, partner. I think I'm 220. I'm down. Yeah. I'm know. 239 still, man. That's a, I'm fucking big. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I'm thinking. I'm... So that is, that's November 4th. You got a celebrity boxing match with, Montel Griffith. Right? Yes. That's it? Yeah. That's it, right? Yeah, Montel Griffith. Okay, just want to make certain. Okay, that just so I want to be able to promote that a little bit more. Yeah, um, but Dan, I, I mean, honestly, I really, I am obsessive possessed. I have, I have very big, big visualization of what can really, what I can really do still. I, I, I'm thinking I'm still really, really tough. And it's probably a problem because I see myself doing big, big things. Well, I mean, having self-confidence is, uh, I mean, it, it's a good thing to have, you know? Like, I mean, I don't see any reason why I can't get in there with Tito Ortiz and get paid a bunch of money to fight that son of a bitch because people would pay to see me and him fight. And I don't see any reason why I can't knock his ass out. So. That's the kind of things I'm thinking about, you know. But are you, I mean, are you looking at this in, in MMA or are you looking at this for boxing now? These celebrity boxing. I don't know. Thing? I don't know. I mean, uh, they're both. They're they're. I love boxing, man. I but I love Muay Thai even better, Dan. Muay Thai would have been the perfect sport for me. I, I would have dominated that shit because you're allowed to grab on the son of a bitch, sweep them, foot sweep them, grab them, swing them around, elbows. It had been so naturally easy for me. It is now. I do it in practice. Nobody nobody can even do nothing. It's just like easy, like playing with kids. Not Brown, though. I mean, Brown's tough as nails, you know, but yeah, I'm talking about just regular people in there. Yeah, sure, how, sure, much, sure. how much does Matt weigh? Um, 200. Really? I didn't know he was that big. So. Yeah, he's 200. Yeah, yeah, he, he's tough as nails, man. He's as tough as they get, but I'm 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 fucking master and 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 size matters. You know that, Don. Yeah. Size fucking matters, man. I've seen a boxing match, yeah. Wrestling boxing. Uh get away with it and other shit, but not not so much, you know, in, in a boxing or a kickboxing fight. We gotta stand there, you know, and take him. Yeah, well, hopefully it doesn't happen because we're best friends. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way you've been talking shit about him, it doesn't sound like your best friends. <laughs> oh God damn, you can't. You yeah. gotta be. A, hey, I respect that son of a bitch more than anybody. He's the toughest son of Ko King. But uh, no, I mean, I would not. I would. I wouldn't want him to think, hell, he was ready to take on Derek Lewis. For the KO King, Derek Lewis has 14. 
They both got 14 knockouts. Matt Brown wants to fight Derek Lewis yeah. for the title. <laughs> so I, I would expect him to fucking think he can walk me. But I'm, of course, I think I can beat him. But I got to, right. oh, I got to get some gas in the tank. But I'm getting it. I'm getting it. The gas, the gas tank is hard, man. That walking don't fill your gas tank up. But it's your strength is everything. But now I've been working on the cardio her lately. And at first I was terrified. It was so ugly. It was so hard. It was so bad. I didn't know. It took a long time, but now I'm starting to see some results. I can go these three, five minute rounds with these guys, and and it, oh, it's just so fun now, man. So, it's the, and, you know, I'm doing this because Dan, I I I love it. I I'm getting paid to fucking transform myself and be a uh be a getting paid to transform myself into the best Mark Coleman I can be, and I absolutely love it. I'm getting this advanced medicine. I got a sponsor here in Columbus, Hyperbaric Therapy of Dublin, Ohio. Oh, my God. Uh, first, I'm, I'm doing hyperbaric chambers three times a week for an hour and a half. It's so damn boring. Yeah. I would never do it. I would never have the patience to do it. But now, not only do I get in that bed, I actually come out of that bed full sweating because I don't waste any time in there for an hour and a half. I'm working there. You just got to think outside the box. What, what you can do to your body, just squeezing the motherfucker, just squeeze yourself for, for a goddamn minute. See how, but, uh, well, that's what I mean. A lot of people don't realize that, that like bodybuilders just sit there just to be hold a flex and hold a flex. You know, yeah, that means right. if you hold it for a longer, longer time, that's called isometrics. I mean, it's the exact that's, same that's thing. That's what I'm telling. That, that's why I said I can I can work my whole fucking body on a car ride home because isometrics are the real deal, and it just makes time. It makes time go, man. You just look at the clock, and next thing you know, you got another. Hour. Dan, I've literally put in fucking. Uh, uh, I call them marathon days where I get up at fucking five a.m. in Vegas. I can remember I was in Vegas. I got up at five. I took off for, you know, but you got to understand, I get cold. The first thing I do is I get cold as I can. And right when I wake up in the morning, get cold. And I might go for an hour walk or advanced walking, but I will always be close to water. And I'll make sure I can drink some water and I can make sure I can put some on my body to re get me cold. And every time I do that, I feel fresh. And literally, I had from 5 a.m. Uh, a couple of days where I went from 5 a.m. until fucking 10 p.m. nonstop doing some kind of exercise or isometric or something. So literally marathon days. And I go to bed, sore as you can fucking be. And then you wake up five, six times. To, you can hardly make it to the bathroom. You're so sore. You're, you feel like an 80-year-old man. You get that piss out. You lay back in bed, but somehow, by the time the fifth or sixth hour hits in, I wake up, and it's not so bad getting to the bathroom, and I stick my head underneath that shower, or I get in the shower and take a three-minute cold shower, and bam, it's another day. And today, I don't know what time it is, but this is the first break I've had talking to you. And, yeah, as you've seen, uh, I stopped walking because we was cutting out. That was probably yeah. No, no, I no, I understand that. We 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 appreciate that. We we, we yeah, yeah. Well, I apologize, but yeah, I mean, I, I did. I'm, I'm just obsessed with and 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 and, and I want to see more results. I I love getting my picture taken and seeing the results every. Almost every two or three days, you can see a difference in my fucking body. And I just love it. I can see how these bodybuilders are so, so obsessed with it. And, you know, I was always obsessed with the way I look, but not like now. Not like now. I got people wanting to, I got people criticizing my every fucking move, Dan. So I got to, I love it. Really? You mean criticizing it? In a negative way? No, I'm just saying, no, I got... When I talk like this, I got like we'll say eighty percent fans, but I remember the ten or twenty percent of these haters that fucking just 
laugh at me. You know what I mean? I get mm-hmm. laughed at a lot. It, it don't bother me at all. It just motivates me because what in the hell are they laughing at? I think I look amazing. I and think I look great. Doing, you're doing something too. They're not. They're not doing something. They're sitting in their fucking ass, you know, in their miserable. Under, you know, in their parents' basement. They're, they're, they're miserable. Or else, someone else's uh, house. Yeah, using somebody else's Wi-Fi. You know, and, and they're fucking. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Hey, some of these guys. Some of the comments is crazy because the comments that stand out to me, they're to the point where I'm going to fucking blow them a kiss or something. Yeah. I try to blow up a kid or call him a co- All right, I got banned from Instagram for calling fuckers, you know, you coward pussy, no low life loser. Yeah, you know, I would say that, and they they banned me after about thirteen violations. I didn't take them <laughs> ser- I didn't. I didn't take them seriously, but all of a sudden, I lost a hundred thousand fans. But I'm back up to twelve. I built it back up to twelve thousand real quick. But uh, uh, most of the time now. I got a new, I got up to 12,000 fans, but these new fans or these new followers, like it's 50, 50, like, like a lot of fucking haters new of my 90,000. It was like 85% positive comments. And then, but now it's like it's a lot more comments, all these, cause there's a lot of new people just decided to follow this crazy old bastard. I mean, they don't even know who I am really, but I, if I if I respond to them, I find out that about eighty percent of the fuckers that I try to respond to, they won't even accept your comment. That's really? how cowards they are. <laughs> They're fucking cowards. They can't even take a. They can't even take a, a comment. That's unbelievable, man. That's that's all these people got to do. Yeah, and it, it keeps them alive. It makes them think they're busy. It, it makes people feel like they're fucking busy because this social media, I have to find time for it because I got I spend a couple hours a day or an hour a day on the shit, just keeping up and, and trying to build it because it's, it's, it's important, man. Dan and Don, you, you built yours up. You got, you you, you built your following up pretty good. I mean, people love you. Yeah. Thanks. People, you're, you're everybody's favorite. <laughs> oh, thanks, thanks. <laughs> I think it's Quinn that he loves. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wait till you, you know, you got you got a little hammer there, man. You start getting hammer on there, and people love you. Where is he? Oh, there you go. Because he's that son of a bitch hasn't moved this whole time. He's the laziest. He's laying there just. Well, you you mean to tell me he doesn't walk with you? I make him walk, but he'll lay down when I'm walking, and I'll have to, I'll just have to drop the leash, and I'll do my shadow boxing when he's till he decides to get back up. I make him walk sometimes, but eighty percent of the time he wants to just lay. Mm-hmm. I love it though. I just so go into my cool. shadow boxing and shit. <laughs> well, well, Mark, if you're, okay, you, you said right now that uh, that you to the Liver King, you've got some type of program that that you're able to, to monetize. Why don't you elaborate and then let no people know so that if they want to purchase products or something like that. So what? How, how is it that you monetize with the the Liver King? He pays me to he pays me to promote his products, so he, he pays me no matter what. But right now. Well, what, what kind of products? This. What kind of products are you using that you, you've got some good results from? Is well, it, is it, it the, the stuff that you talked about um, when you said that you're taking uh, the, the different? Uh, yes, here I, I'll just show you real quick. Yeah, it's that pretty, way. Uh, pretty that quick, way it's... dry, but no, everybody. It takes the work. I don't have to. The best food you can eat is the fucking liver of a cow. And the best you could, the most nutritious way to eat it is raw liver, the testicles, the liver, the the meat itself, right there. There's Liver King's whole feast, nose to tail. Everything's in there from the fucking, from the cow or wherever they get the protein. Nose to tail, bones. 
nose and tail, bones and blood, horns and hooves, everything's in there. It's just perfect, high, high quality protein. It does the work for me. Look at that. I mean, the proof's right there, man. The shit just, it just melted off me. I don't miss. I, I take at least four of those a fucking day. They're delicious. That's the best thing about it. But then, here we got, you know, right here. We got all these. The charge, the honor, the fuel, the king, the ignite, the armor. Greetings real quick. All it is is grass-fed brain, grass-fed brain. Wild caught fish, grass fed livers in, in, in the charge, in the honor, grass fed liver, grass fed bone marrow, in the fuel, probably going to be tallow, grass fed tallow. That's all it is, is tallow in a pill. Energy, baby. Fat is energy. That's fat. The king, of course, there's going to be liver in there, testicles, heart, liver, bone. I live off these. I don't miss a day. I don't miss a day. Your body takes these and it you take uses one, one, them. one each seat for each meal, or do you take one? To, or how, how's that work? Six. six a day. Six a day of each of these. Six a day. So do you, do you break it up like where I take a two for breakfast, two for lunch, two for? No, I, I, I split them up three and three, just twice a day. Okay. You know, split them up, but uh. Cause you, you okay, I'm sorry. Cause you said that you're on that kind of a diet where you're basically eating yeah. for like about a three hour time period, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I take them in that window. Okay. I take them during that window. Once in a while, like I said, I, I six days a week. But once in a while, I'll take those like uh, at, at around noon, just to give my body some, some perfect clean food to go ahead and use real quick. But uh, I don't want to break my fast, but. Uh, no, I, I take those daily. And then, well, the best thing is the, the Liver King bars are to die for, I told you, with uh, with the creatine in them. They, they, only, they only let me have five a fucking day or else I'd eat, I'd eat 50 of these damn things. Right here, baby. That's, that's how much go. protein is how, how much protein is in one of those, in one of those bars? Yeah, I'll look. Right there, the Liver King bar. Does it say how many grams of protein? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 210 calories, 16 grams of fat, 11 grams of carbs, 12 grams of protein. So not, not a ton of them, but it's just the perfect combination. It's all clean, but, but they're fucking... <laughs> They're to die for, Dan. These. Mm. I mean, are they sweet tasting or what? Uh, what are they? Uh, oh, yeah. uh, I wonder what they what they have there for. Makes like, sweet think, think like a cheesecake. What's the crumbs around the corner of it? Cracker crumbs. Oh, really? So uh, oh. that's how I'm describing this bitch right now. It's just melting in my mouth. Mm. See, oh you should have made yourself a shake there to wash it down with now. Yeah. Graham, I Graham usually cracker do. crumbs, aren't it? Yeah, Graham. Well, I, I, that's the only thing I could think of to describe how it tastes. Like, right. like the Graham crackers only, I mean, I mean, those fuckers with a little butter. Graham, <laughs> you know, butter, people don't realize how good butter is for you, Dan. Pure, pure butter is the best thing for you. Uh, raw milk. Raw milk is amazing for you, but can't even get raw milk. Oh, well, yeah. see, she, uh, Mark, I, I grew up on a farm, so we actually had Peggy the milk cow. So we had raw milk. We had real butter. We that's had, and, what and, fuck, that, that's why you're, you and your brothers were so blessed, man. That's what the carnivore diet is, Dan. That's that's how I grew up, kind of. But not, not, I didn't, uh, wasn't on a farm like you, but that's what I'm doing now. And these yeah. these things make it easy. The supplements make it easy. Liver King, he eats literally pounds of raw fucking testicles and raw liver a day. He eats. It's a job. 
lots of it. I would have to do that to look like this, only the supplements do it for me. And I'll, oh. I'll eat the raw stuff once or twice a week just to get the feeling, man. And really, just to get the feeling. It's not that bad. I like it, to be honest with you. I like it. Mm. Well, Mark, I, I mean, I know we've, we've taken up a lot of your time right now. I'm just wondering if there's something else that we missed. Don, can you think of anything that we missed through uh, an well, MMA? We covered an brains, we covered testicles. Uh, I think we've hit it all, man. <laughs> we, we, we've hit, yeah. Hooves and tail, brains, testicles, you know what What's left? Uh, I think that I think that, that that's about it. Mark, anything else that, that you want to plug or give you a lot, one more chance one more chance to plug your social media and stuff like that? If anybody wants to uh, get in contact there with you for Instagram, Mark Coleman UFC. Um, follow me there. You can do you can find out everything about me on Instagram. That's my go to. I'm on there daily. Uh, but can people actually get in touch with you through that method? Yes, just send a me message? a DM and send me a DM and I get back to everybody. Then I check all my DMs and I at least say hi. But if nice. they say I got some cash for you, I say hello aloud. I say a lot louder. <laughs> Capitalize the hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. what, what do you think so, about uh, this? What do you think about this fucking bullshit? Government wanted to go to digital currency. Ooh, that'd be horrible. That, that's fucking one of the fucking scam on the yeah, government. That'd be the, the, be the, the end government. of us. Yeah, it's supposed to be of the people, for the people, by the people. They're fucking doing shit without our consent. You know? That'll be the that that'll be the end of us because Dan's dollars that he's got hid will be worthless. Right, right. Don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta pull them out of the ground too, Dan. When they when they sit in the ground, they mold up. So you gotta you gotta pull them out and let them air out too. Oh, okay. Yeah, they, I, I think get the, get the clothes lined out, put the clothes pins on to them. Yeah, 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 air them out. Yes. <laughs> what's uh What's next for you? Hey, yeah, Dan. You got any contacts there in Japan? We gotta get there and make some money, bro. Pro wrestling, I know. I know we can make some. I think we can make big money, be stars. Well, I again, I, I well never you know. know what, never know what this video will bring you there, Mark. Never know what this video will bring. <laughs> <laughs> what? Damn things too. Yeah, I lost here. I just just when he just when 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 Mark, can you hear me? Yeah. I think I think you took the the decibels too high because it it there was no sound at all. Just that. You did out. You did out. Japan work. Hey, you know what, Dan? I heard Steve. Steve contacted me, and a kid named Rio, who's a Japanese kid in the judo club, said that uh, over in Japan they're doing something with the old fighters coaching new young young fighters. Versus street thugs or street fighters and for uh, like one minute rounds. So hmm. I haven't I haven't heard of it, but you know that they have. So I'm into it's, anything they want me to do because I want to get back to Japan and get some of that food. Yeah, it's a beautiful man. The food is great. The country food is is great. It's great. I love it there, man. I fucking love it there. Well, gentlemen, I think on that note, uh, it's time to feed the beast. So uh, I will simply bid you all adieu. Mark, you just go out there and then get get uh, more of that movement going there for you. Get uh, whatever else you, whatever else you have to put in for your laps or your walking or your stairs or whatever. And uh, we'll probably touch base with you in another, say, six, six months to a year just to simply see what is the newest update there on the hammer, Mark Coleman. All right, guys. Love you. See you soon. See you, sir. Thanks, Take man. care. Love you guys. Love Bye, guys. Too. Thank you.
Thank you for watching another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. You better like, subscribe, and share, or I'm going to come to your house.